Welcome to Mysteries, Ness, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. And welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Hello. Um, Here we are again. We're back. <laughs> I was trying to help you out that time. Yeah. So do you have anything, um, any sort of like a summary of the, the past week? Anything to, to talk about? Um, boring. No, I'm just kidding. I know. Um, honestly, like honestly the past boring. week. <laughs> it's been so cold. Yeah, there's I like, can't do anything. Right. And I'm bored. Exactly. I'm bored in the house and I'm in the house bored, as that one man said on TikTok. Yes. But we did yeah. go see Mean Girls. Yeah, yeah. That was Loved definitely it. the highlight. Um yeah. we went and saw Mean Girls. That was I liked it. I never I liked you it a have lot. seen yeah. have you you've seen the musical before. Well, I've never seen it. I've only okay. listened to it. Okay. Yeah, but um, I know the soundtrack, back to front. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. Well, I didn't have any idea what this was gonna be like at all, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you had like a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I liked it. I don't know. No, it was cute. It so. was cute. I loved it. Some people talk bad about musicals and stuff, but yeah, yeah. they do. But it was good. It was so, good. If you even like musicals a little bit, go and see it. Yeah, haters are gonna hate, but the vibes were immaculate. You know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's never going to be as good as the original. Sorry. Stop getting mad about it because it never is. No, that's so true. Definitely true. Um, Loved it. Yeah, and- it, it did. It made me want to go watch the original again. Same. But I, I did not do that yet. Same. Same. <laughs> now that we're bringing it up again, I might go watch it. <laughs> yeah, we after have this. to. We really have speaking, to. Speaking of like movies, though, I, I ordered something... This okay. past week that I am very excited about. What did you order? It is the Twilight makeup collection. Oh my from gosh. ColourPop. Okay, not sponsored, first of all. <laughs> because if it was sponsored, I would be getting it too. <laughs> oh my god, no. I'm That's so, so excited. That's so exciting. It's sold out in like... You're telling me. I tried to get 20 it. 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Update. I didn't get it. But I'm so excited to see it. I hope. I, know. I hope it's like as magical... As it looks, which I'm sure it will be. Yeah. Like, ah, it's so beautiful. The eyeliners, I've never seen eyeliners that look like that before. Mm -hmm. No, I know. They're sparkly. It's, it's, and obviously, if you've ever listened to us before, you know we love Twilight. Mm -hmm. We mention it at least once every single episode. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So, it's really fitting um, that you would get the entire collection of makeup. I mean, I had to. You had no choice. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's exciting. So what do you anyways. think is going to be your favorite product before you get it? <laughs> and we'll update the listeners next week, um, hopefully, when you have it. Yeah. The, um, I think the eyeshadows. I don't know. I'm really excited about mm, it. The palette? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. We should do, like, a, um, maybe we can do a, a TikTok, like, unboxing or something. Oh, okay, yeah. We can, yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> Honestly, I'm down. Yeah. I'm going to come unbox yeah. it with you and just pretend like it's mine. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay, well, okay. go watch our TikTok. Go just follow us on TikTok also. <laughs> yeah. We're going to start posting back on there. It's been a minute. We have TikTok- TikToks up, but, you know, it's been a minute. Mm-hmm. But 2024, New Year, New Us, we're going to start posting again. So... I mean, maybe. Yeah. Well, no, I'm going to try. try. I'm really going to try. (laughs) It's one of my resolutions that I recently figured out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, also I can't remember now, but like, as we were just not to go back to the Mean Girls movie, but uh, there was a quote, like a very popular quote from Mean Girls that was not in the new Mean Girls. And I can't remember what it was, but I thought of it this morning and I was like, wait, that wasn't in the movie. Oh, but now I can't remember what it was. And it's really going to bother me. Hmm. So if okay. I remember it, it might be randomly, <laughs> I'll, but I'll tell you. But Okay. Unfortunately, yeah, I'll be ready me. for it. <laughs> unfortunately. But I'm super excited about the Twilight palette. ColourPop, if you're listening, please at least send me one of the eyeliners. Like, please. <laughs> I'll pay for it. Uh, right. <laughs> I'm just, I'll get it on the next drop. They better mm-hmm. redrop it. Mm-hmm. I swear. No, they are. They are. <sighs> and okay, also... One more thing before we get into the stories. As we are recording this, we are going to, we're going into the sixth episode of Percy Jackson this week is coming out. Yes. And it's supposed to be the musical episode. 
And I am so excited because I think it's the lotus flower scene. And I, this is our before. So next week we're going to come back <laughs> and we'll, we'll have watched it. So just know my excitement is at level 110 right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they better mm-hmm. live up to it. That's all I got to say. Yeah. They I mean, better. I'm. I still haven't watched the <laughs> movie, so. <laughs> well, it's okay. You should just just know you have to be hyped for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm hyped for it. Okay, so with all of that said, um, I'm gonna get into mine. Okay, just let's jump do it. in. So this week, um, I don't have another story that has to do with Percy Jackson. I'm Whoa. sorry. No, I'm just we're, kidding. It's we're okay. stepping away. <laughs> we're stepping away from Greek mythology. Um, but I do have, I have a cryptid to talk about. Oh, we have not had a cryptid in a while. Yeah. Have you heard of the cryptid, um, named Champ? Um, no. (laughs) He's a lake monster. Nope. Never heard of him. Okay. Um, okay. I have another question. Have you heard of Lake Champlain? Yes. Is that in Illinois? It's not. Okay. Well, then that's confusing. (laughs) (laughs) Lake Champlain is in, like, New York and Vermont. Interesting. Then maybe not. Yeah. I think there is... Maybe I'm thinking of a different town called Champaign. Okay. I don't know. Who knows what my brain is Yeah, no, it's, it's like, close to Champaign, but it has an L in there, so it's Champlain. (laughs) Interesting. No, I don't think I've ever heard of any of the things. Okay. Um, actually, I, I mentioned it to Garrett when I was doing the research, and I was like, you've never heard of Lake Champlain? What do you mean? Like, it's like a famous lake. Is and it? Th- see, that's what he was trying to say. Like, I don't, he's like, I don't think it is. It's probably because I just, I grew up in the Northeast. I mean, okay, but you didn't grow up close to Vermont. I know, but like, I don't know. It's a really big lake, and I just feel like I just have heard of it before. I don't know. Okay. I mean, I believe you. I don't know yeah. anything, really. But I tried to I tried to gaslight him into thinking that it's, like, a, um, it's like like a really famous, famous one. Okay. Yeah. Well, after we record, I'll tell him. I'll be like, Garrett, how have you never heard of Lake Champlain? <laughs> exactly. Obviously. <yeah. laughs> See, that's what I was hoping that you would say, something like that, but you didn't know it either. So whatever. I didn't, but Garrett doesn't have to know that. He doesn't listen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, Lake Champlain. Um, this is, uh, so the area that it's in is called the Adirondacks. Now, I have heard of that. Okay, good. So <laughs> the Adirondacks, and it's the Adirondacks, like, largest lake. Okay, um, wait, hold on. Actually, I think I'm thinking of the chair. The Adirondack chair, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am. There's a lot of connections to be made, okay? Okay, okay. <laughs> we get it, we get it. Um, okay, so anyways, it is literally the lake, like, I, I went on the map and zoomed in, and in the middle of this lake is the the borderline for New York and Vermont. So oh, it, it, like, really... That's interesting. Yeah. So it's just, like, half and half, both of their lake. Um, they share it. And then um, at the top is canada so it it actually goes into canada into quebec about six miles that's giving if you're boating on that lake you could get in some serious trouble quickly (laughs) multiple state lines country lines country lines (laughs) yeah yeah so so yeah and it's it's actually it's a big lake it's 125 miles long good lord yeah um it's used for boating, fishing, water sports, you know, all the all the fun stuff. You know, people just go there for vacations and stuff and, you know. And, of course, they have a lake monster named Champ. Oh, I see his name now. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so it's really just like Champlain cut Champ. in half. So, Champ. <laughs> yeah. What <laughs> a cutie. Um, and I've also seen uh, Champ and Champy with a Y champy i like that better yeah so you know either one but um so this creature uh this lake monster has traced back all the way you know to the lake's first existence probably (laughs) because the indigenous people of the land they um are also have also seen this lake monster for you know generations wow 
well, good so for the indi- yeah, exactly. So the indigenous people of the area are the Abenaki and the Iroquois um, people, and they have legends about a large creature in the lake. Um, and they describe it as like a large horned serpent or like a giant snake. Mm-mm. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm no and... longer a friend of Champy. <laughs> you don't like it? No. Um, and the, the Abenaki term for the creature in the lake is um, Gitasog. Gitaskog. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to go with. Um, so that's what they have called it. And in the 18th century, when French, like, quote unquote, explorers... Or, you know, <laughs> land thieves. Yeah. Um, anyways, when they came over to the area, the Native Americans, um, they warned them to not disturb the water because of the serpent in the water. Mm-hmm. So it really, like, is in history from, you know. From the beginning. Yeah, that's crazy. From the beginning. Mm-hmm. So, um the first European to see Champ was Samuel D. Champlain. Okay. Uh, yeah. So he, like, Samuel D. Champlain, he was the f- person who, like, this lake was named after. And coincidentally, he also was the first one to see the monster. So. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, actually, though, accounts show that he actually saw this monster near um like a different body of water (laughs) um okay but yeah i know but you know the legend says that it was lake champlain so like i guess we can just go with that i don't know yeah i guess we're gonna have to yeah (laughs) because like i don't know some sometimes these legends sort of like take they're like grasping at different straws and they come together absolutely and it's just like yeah it's just like a whole mess of stuff and you're like let's just try to put this together and Mm -hmm. make a good story yeah i trust me i get that so i mean regardless like that other body of water was pretty close by so maybe maybe he does live in um lake champlain but was just like over there for the day you know yeah i mean you know you have to get out of your house occasionally exactly exactly so um i have a quote here his his description of what he saw so he says that there is a um there is also a great abundance of many species of fish um amongst others there is one um called by the natives uh kusaru um which is of various lengths but the largest of them and these tribes have told me are from 8 to 10 feet long, which that's pretty big. Mm -mm, mm -mm. (laughs) Um, And then he says, I have seen some 5 feet long, which were as big as my thigh. (laughs) That's crazy. And with a head as large as two two fists, with a snout and two feet and half and a half long and double uh, double row of very sharp, dangerous teeth. That's horrifying. you imagining this? This is like yes. horrible. That's so scary. Um, yeah. And then he says, um, its body has a good deal um the shape of the pike, <laughs> but it is protected by scales of a silvery gray color and so strong that a dagger could not pierce them. Oh my god, no, I really don't like that. Yeah, so that's that's his description of this thing he saw. Um, And historians believe that he is describing a garfish. Okay. But like a really, really big one. (laughs) Got it. Because they're not usually that big. Yeah. Because he said, what did he say? He said five feet and as thick as his thigh. He said, um, yeah, like natives have told him that they're eight to ten feet long. Mm -mm. I mean, maybe they just used to be bigger back then, you know? I mean, I guess so. I don't know. I don't know. Like, that's scary. (laughs) Yeah, it really is scary. Yeah. I want so, no part of that. Right? Um, but the, the garfish that historians believe that he was talking about, they are actually still in Lake Champlain today. So, like, he really could have been talking about a really, really big fish. Oh, okay. That makes sense, though. Mm-hmm. 
So, um, another account, um, another, like, famous account of the, um, champ, um, this monster, um, is from the Plattsburgh Republican newspaper. So, <clears throat> um, on Saturday, July 24th of 1819, <laughs> a long, long time ago, mm -hmm. um, this guy named Captain Crumb, he reported a black monster about, you're gonna scream at this, 187 feet long. Okay, no. Mm -mm. That's like half the lake. Like, like, how are you gonna just say, how? oh yeah, it was about 187 feet long. <laughs> First of all, why would he not just say 200? <laughs> right, right. 187 is so specific. He he just knew. Um, that's like almost two football fields. Right, yeah. <laughs> or actually, I don't even know if that's math. Maybe it's more. Isn't it? No. It's 100, 100 yards. yards. <laughs> yeah, actually, can't do math, so not doing it. Yeah, listen, we're... Sorry. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we both we're both checked out for that anyways um 187 feet long and with a head that looked like a seahorse and he said that it reared 15 feet out of the water okay i did the math um okay he's claiming at 187 feet um five and a half football fields long oh are you serious yeah so that's extra sir but if that's How many real, feet long is a football field? Wait. <laughs> well, because I did 100 divided by 3 because there's 3 yards. I mean, 3 feet in a yard. You know. Mm. Not to talk you through the math equation, but that's really big. Wait, is that right? Well, I never said I was a mathematician. But <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> okay we're, we're gonna go with it um but yeah he said that it also jumped 15 feet out of the water that's and crazy and he said that it had three teeth um eyes the color of a peeled onion <laughs> just what descriptive kind of onion um i mean i'm guessing it that just means it's like yellowish i don't know okay but what if it was a red onion <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Um, it also had a white star on its forehead and it had like a belt of red around its neck. So like a little choker moment. <laughs> oh, okay. Go yeah. Off, queen. So, mm -hmm. so that's champ according to Captain Crumb. Uh, this is a lot of detail. <laughs> you it know? really is. Like he really got a good long look. Right. Allegedly. And also like. Allegedly, he was standing about 200 yards away when he saw this. Okay. So, okay. So, like, was this really... I mean, I know it's really big, but, like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I don't believe him just simply based off the saying 187 feet. <laughs> right, I know. Um, yeah, just honestly, the whole thing is, like, a lot to take in. Mm-hmm. True. But I mean, I, I don't know. Could be, could be. Uh, so also in 1873, a New York Times story reported that a railroad crew saw the head of an enormous serpent in the lake. Mm. So this is another account. Um, and they said that it had very bright silvery scales. So just like, just like, just like Champlain yep. said. Um, mm -hmm. And they glistened in the sun. Hmm. So, that's another account. Um, and then in July of that same year, the county sheriff, uh, Nathan H. Mooney, he reported that an enormous snake or a water serpent was in the lake. Um, and he said that it was 25 to 30 feet long. Which, like, that's big, but, like, more reasonable. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. That's, that's more... There's actually snakes that are that big, so... Right. You know. Not that I really want to believe that myself, but I know that, that they exist. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, okay. And also in August um, of that same year, so two accounts already, and then this same year, 
uh, the steamship WB Eddie, it ran into something, and they said that they they ran into Champ. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they said that they hit him, and then the ship turned like almost turned over. How do they know it was him? That's what, I don't know. That's what they said. They're like, oh my god, we hit him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe it. I believe it too. <laughs> <laughs> um. So next. After after all that happened, you know, this is sort of getting um, getting picked up by the news. Like, everybody's start, starting to hear about it. And in comes P.T. Barnum. And the circus thing. circus guy, you yeah. know. Yeah, and he well, says, know. he's like, I'm offering a reward of $50,000 for the hide of the great Champlain serpent. Okay, P.T. Barnum. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Can I also just say that I'm going to P.T. Barnum's circus in a couple weeks? Oh, Barnum and Bailey. Barnum and Bailey, yeah. Awesome. With no I animals. Am... No live animals. So. Oh, that's cool. Shout out. Because that's like, that's like the one part about it that's like bad. You know? Yeah, so they actually, fun fun side <laughs> sidetracked um, fact is that they stopped being a circus actually a couple, like before COVID. Oh, okay. Because of, like, the animal issues and stuff. And now they're coming back for the first year without animals. So, I'm excited. That's cool. Oh, this is the first year without them? Yeah. It is. Oh, wow. So, Hmm. I'm excited. But I didn't expect him to show up in this story. That's crazy. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I I remember going to see the circus when I was, like, in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. I went, like, every year. It was such a fun... Such a fun thing. It really is. Um, but yeah, that's so good without the animals. Mm-hmm. But this one, you know, this is problematic because they're like, I want the skin. <laughs> he wants of the this skin. Animal. He doesn't even want the animal. Yeah. <laughs> and he wants it because he's he wanted to show it off at the World's Fair show. Oh, the World's Fair. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So honestly, I love hearing about like the World's Fair. I want to go to the World's Fair. You know, like nowadays we don't really need it anymore because everything's yeah. online on the internet. Lame. You know what's going on. Yeah. So, I think we should throw it back but, and have one. Have right? a World's like Fair. it seems so cool. Like it brings the world together. Yeah. I don't know. Listen, I would go. Yeah. <laughs> you think you'd have to like be invited? I don't know. I don't know how um, it works. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> We could get it back. I could get us in. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, he wanted to, uh, he wanted it for the World's Fair, but nobody ever, nobody ever took him up on this offer because they couldn't get him. So, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And then after that happened so that was in 1873 is when he um offered that prize so that's a lot of money for 1873 as well fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars that's a lot of money today <laughs> exactly that's what i'm saying <laughs> like yeah that's crazy so jumping ahead to 1945 mm-hmm. um passengers of the ss ticonderoga which the pencil side note that's what i'm saying I immediately looked up this ship, right? And it's apparently it's a city near near the lake in New York. What? Yeah, it's like a little town. Is that where the pencils um, are made? Uh, no. <laughs> That's so I looked it up. This is um. So I was just talking to Garrett about this before we got on to this to start recording. Mm-hmm. Um. And I started talking about the SS Ticonderoga because I was like, what? Why? Why is there a ship named this? So I went into this whole deep dive on it. And so we're just going to go on a tangent and talk about it for a second. Okay, good. So (laughs) the Ticonderoga pencils are named after the area in New York because there's a fort, a fort, Fort Ticonderoga. Oh, interesting. And it was a fort during the Revolutionary War. Um, and it was, like, a really important, like, there was an important battle there that was won by Americans. So, so, yeah, that's where that comes from. And I guess, and honestly, I do remember the pencil, like, it was supposed to be, like, oh, it's as strong as, like, Ticonderoga. Yeah, like, you can't break it, yeah. Because they were strong in the battle, so it's strong. Oh, 
That's yeah. That's cool. So it's linked to that, I guess. But I couldn't, I was trying to find out where the pencils were like originally made, right? Yeah. Um, and I found like New Jersey and stuff. And, like, maybe even Florida. But I couldn't find, like, it nowhere said that they were made in Ticonderoga. So. <laughs> that, see, that's fake. Ticonderoga. So I'm pretty sure they're not made there. But somebody, like, took that fact of, like, <laughs> it being part of the Revolutionary War and, like, just ran just, with it. You ran so. with the brand. Listen, I'm really glad that you did that deep dive because that would have really bothered me. Had no, I, I not know. known the answer it was, to that It question. was bothering me. I saw the this name of this boat and I was like, what? Like, that's so... <laughs> This taking me back to school. <laughs> real, um, for real, though. People who have never used those pencils, first of all, you're missing out. Second of all, you really do not know anything what we're talking about right now. Yeah. They're just, like, really... I mean, literally, it's, like, the basicest, most basic pencil. Right? But it's it's Ticonderoga. Yeah. So they're, they're the better. Pencils. They're it's the like best. the Stanley Cup of pencils, allegedly. Exactly. Not in my personal belief, but, like, <laughs> the great world, you know? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um... So anyways, they have like, yeah, they're on the map and they, uh, they have this boat, the SS Ticonderoga Mm -hmm. that, um, was, um, it was in, uh, Lake Champlain. And so, and it hit the snake. No. So that's not the one. So this is. A different one okay. hit, said that they hit the snake. That was the um, gotcha. WB Eddy. Okay, okay, gotcha. Um, but the SS Ticonderoga, they, there were passengers on it because it was, I believe, it was kind of like a ferry boat, mm-hmm. and it had passengers on it, and they claimed to see the creature oh. in the lake. So scary. So that's the story there. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. After our little tangent. Um, yeah. So fast forwarding again to 1992, there were a lot of sightings. Um, over 600 people claimed to have see to see Champ all over the lake at different um, areas of the lake. And then in 2003, the Discovery Channel did a special on Champ, um, and it was called America's Loch Ness Monster. Classic, you know. Of course. And, you know, I was going to say, it's giving the Loch Ness Monster low-key. Yes. And actually, um, there was a, there is a famous picture um, that I'll, I can send it to you. Should I send it now? I was going to send it in a little bit, but let me say it now. You should. And then you Um, should also check out our Instagram, because you can see the pictures on Instagram. Yes. It, um, but this is a famous picture that somebody took of him, um, supposedly quote unquote um um of champ so listen and see see what you think okay for one it's blurry for two it's black and white <laughs> and the yes. only thing in that picture <laughs> that's clear is well it's not he's not even clear but he's like more clear than everything else is champ the alleged champ um but yes, loki yeah. it looks like the dinosaur from the land before time photoshopped into the yeah. Lake picture yeah so people who try to debunk this um say that it's like a branch it a could branch definitely be a branch yeah. as well yeah i mean it could also be champ though i mean it could it could be it just like bends yeah. at such a really weird like a very straight angle that i'm just like right yeah. would, would a snake be able to bend like that i don't know Hmm. I don't know. Tell mm-hmm. us what you think about this picture. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that that's like one of the most famous pictures. Well, what do you think about the picture? Yeah, so I, well, I mean, I know <laughs> it's not the fun answer, but I think it's just like a branch in the water. <laughs> Same. Yeah. Unfortunately. Same. I just think it's like way too, way too straight of a turn, like a curve. Yeah. For that to be an animal. Yeah. And, like, the dimensions. I don't know. It just looks like... Well, you have to imagine most of him might be underwater still. If this yeah. is him. Exactly. But I don't know. I don't know about that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Where was I here? So, um, yeah. The Discovery Channel, they had, like, a special 
um, in 2003, and there were also three new sightings that June. Um, and uh, so taking it back a little bit to the 80s, um, I guess I have some of this a little bit out of order, but even though some people, like a lot of people, don't believe Champ is real, he is protected by law just in case. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. So in in the 80s, so there there's like a few different things that were passed. So in, in 1981, uh, Port, Port Henry, New York, they declared that their waters are a safe haven for Champ. Oh, okay. In 1982, uh, the state of Vermont, they passed a house resolution protecting Champ. <laughs> oh, wow. And then in 83, New York, um, the state assembly and the state senate, they passed resolutions protecting Champ. So they really just like, wow. they're going all out. They're like, we protected. need to protect. Yeah, we're protecting this sea monster. Or no, this lake monster. Um. I mean, because, like, just in case, you know, like, if yeah, anybody ever sees it one day, they're like, you know, we need to protect him, so. Yeah, like, P.T. Barnum wanted the skin. They're like, can't do that. Sorry. Exactly. He's protected. So, so, yeah. If you're trying to go out there and hunt hunt him or something, you can't do that. Illegal. Yeah, <laughs> you'd better not. Mm-hmm. So, today, um, he's celebrated. You know, it, it started with those laws, probably, and he still... People, people love Champ in this area. I love that for Champ. Um, in Vermont, there's a baseball team known as the Lake Monsters, and they <laughs> have Champ as their mascot. Okay, that is a cool team name. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. We love that. We love it. Uh, there's also a Champ statue by the water in Port Henry, New York. Ooh, fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's images um, of Champ, like, all over the area. So there's, like, merch that people sell, um, oh, like, so sweatshirts, fun. t-shirts, all the stuff. Local businesses will have his picture, like, everywhere. <laughs> Just all this sort of stuff, you know? Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah, we love Champ. <laughs> Listen, I personally don't love Champ because I don't love snakes. They scare me so bad. True. Water snakes, even know. worse. A lake snake? I mean, <laughs> that's my worst nightmare. Yeah. But from far away, I can love Champ. Yeah. Like, very We love far. him as an idea. Yeah. I don't ever want to see him. I hope he's not real. Because <laughs> if I have to believe that he's real, I'm already not going to swim in the lake, but I would really never swim in the lake, ever. <laughs> mm -hmm. Life or death situation mm -hmm. wouldn't swim in the lake if <laughs> if I knew Champ was out there. Honestly, yeah, I, I totally agree. <laughs> oh, you know what you didn't mention? I just wonder, like, are there a bunch of deaths in Lake Champlain? Mm, like, um, do, is, I, he, is he hungry for human flesh or I an herb for? I did not see anything about that. Hmm. So. Curious. Well, he must just eat some plants then. Yeah. Or photosynthesize. I mean, if he's been around since the Native Americans, then, you know. He's obviously more advanced than us. I know. Yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah. Either that or like right now, like whatever uh, monsters in the lake now is just his ancestor. True. That's like his great, 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 great grandson. Yeah. <laughs> Champ the sixth or something. Yep. <laughs> Love that for Champ. What a cutie. What a cutie except for not a cutie at all. Especially not if he's 187 feet long. Like, whatever it's I mean, said. like, the mascots that they use and everything, like, the pictures, they are cute. So, I'm going with that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If, if I'm looking at, like, a cartoon version of him. Cuter. But you know how I feel about snakes. So scary. Well. True. Um. Yeah. Shout out to Champ if he's out there. You know? Let us know if you believe in him. Honestly, personally, don't know if I do. But I have a little bit of hope for him, you know? Yeah. Yeah, true. Um, mm -hmm. Well. <laughs> I'm, like, looking at pictures right now. Just to <laughs> of, just, of just Champ. Yeah. We've well, got some Champ fans. Oh, I wanted to show you. I wanted to send you the mascot. <sighs> yeah, send me something cuter. 
so I can be like, he's cute. Because I think like I'm just <laughs> like slamming on his name, saying I don't like him. I don't hate him. Snakes just really scare me. I don't like the way they move their bodies. <laughs> Slithering around. Oh, well. See, the, the mascot version of him, though, is like kind of like a dinosaur. Yeah, I was going to say, he doesn't even look like a snake. <laughs> he looks like a dinosaur. But then again, how could a mascot be a snake? You know, he has to have legs. Yeah. I mean, the mascot's cute. Yeah. He's wearing a little blue mask. He kind of looks mm-hmm. like a Ninja Turtle. Like an off-brand Walmart version. But I love him. <laughs> yeah. Love Champ. Well, I guess drastically switching gears here. Um, to my story. This one's dark, okay? I know, I feel like I say that every time. But this one, it's real dark. So if you don't want to hear something real dark, maybe just, you know, go ahead. Skip out. You know, it. and I was, I was just saying before we started recording that, like, my stories are always so lighthearted and then yours, like, <laughs> dive deep into something else a lot of the time. I know. I, I, I fought on rabbit holes. I was just on Savannah, like, right before we started recording, like... I don't intend to have these, like, super long, historic, like, stories, but I find something, <clears throat> I find something, get really interested, and fall down a hole where I can't stop researching it, and then we end up here, and I guess that's why we have a podcast <laughs> doing this, but it's good, because we balance each other out, you know? Yeah, exactly. A little bit of dark, a little bit of light. I mean, you got you got to have it all. That's just the world, baby. <laughs> But anyway, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this week, I am covering the legend of Pennhurst State School and Hospital. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Yeah, so it wasn't always known by that name. Okay, it was originally called the Eastern Pennsylvania State Institution for the Feeble-Minded and Epileptic. So interesting. um, Yeah, and today... It's known as Pennhurst Asylum. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Heard of that one. Yeah. So, yeah. It's located in Spring City, Pennsylvania. Shout out, Pennsylvania. Okay. For you, Savannah. Spring City. It's located, like, in the very bottom right of Pennsylvania. So, hmm. yeah. You probably never heard of it. <laughs> um, but very small town. So this place, it once set just abandoned as this whole hospital place. But now, today, it's reopened as Pennhurst Asylum where you can do tours and you can either do like a regular tour or a paranormal tour. And it's also home to one of the scariest haunted attractions in the U.S. now. Like, purposefully haunted, if you know what I'm trying to say. Like, a Halloween vibe right so yeah. so even though a lot of people know it as penhurst asylum that's actually the name of the haunted house attraction not the actual place if you know what i'm trying to say okay yeah. so it's actually called penhurst state school and hospital mm-hmm. but people know it as asylum just because it sounds scarier it is scarier it's literally the scarier part of it so yeah. You know, I just looked up that area, though, mm-hmm. and it's not it's not too far from where I grew up. And you've never heard of it? Spring City? No, I have. I have. Spring City? S- well, maybe not Spring City. Oh, no, that's what I meant. But not Penhurst me. Asylum. Yeah. It's like, um, I mean, it's a small area, but it's like yeah. 45 minutes from where I grew oh, up. Oh, <laughs> wow, that's not even that far. That's crazy. Yeah, so. I actually um got inspired to do this story because I'm making my, wa- my mom watch Stranger Things. And they are set in Indiana, and they were like, we're going to send you to Pennhurst. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Okay, um, yeah. And so I no, was like, I, I don't even remember them t- t- saying that. Yeah, it was like <laughs> Lucas and Dustin fighting, arguing like they always do. And Lucas was okay. like, I'm going to take, I'm going to send, get your mom to send you to Pennhurst. And I was like, oh, what is that? So then I found this story. So <laughs> there's lots of history to go over so yeah i've definitely heard of penhurst but i really am excited for you to get into it oh yeah Yeah. i don't i don't really know much about it um it's really bad okay i'm actually really saying this like (laughs) okay (laughs) like i'm leaving a lot of stuff out it's that bad so yeah (laughs) let's let's get into it this is your last chance to escape before it gets bad so not you savannah you're held captive (laughs) (laughs) 
But anyway, so Pinhurst opened its doors on November 23rd, 1908. And so they opened after the Pennsylvania government authorized this, like, they were basically like, we have to create this institution to take the pressure off of the other hospitals and, like, care centers in the area who were housing all these patients because they were like, there's just too many. So there needs to just be one place where everybody goes. And so, yeah, they were like, we're going to make it. And they were like, we're going to call it a place for the feeble-minded and the epileptic because they just didn't know how to treat those people back in the day. Yeah, and that, like a lot of the old terms and stuff just sound so bad nowadays. It's very, yeah. It's Like that sounds ugh, so bad. It's so so bad feeble-minded like, like that's oh so gosh. mean first of all you don't right. know <laughs> yeah like imagine saying that today oh nobody no nobody would say canceled that. immediately if you said that in any kind of seriousness um so when it opened this place it was supposed to be somewhat of like a sanctuary actually for those with like intellectual disabilities and people with epilepsy and it's crazy that they're <laughs> categorizing people with intellectual disabilities and people with ep- epilepsy together in my opinion because that's how little they knew about like epilepsy as a disease at all yeah they were like oh yeah. if you have epilepsy like you're crazy and i mean that's crazy that they would say most of the things <laughs> but like epilepsy is i just feel like that's wild that yeah. it was categorized in with that you know i mean a lot of the time like they There are some things that it epilepsy does like coincide with sometimes, but yeah, like sometimes it doesn't have anything to do with you having some other problem. Exactly. So, exactly. It's just, it it blew my mind, kind of. But anyway, so this place, it was supposed to be their school, work, and living quarters all in one, and it was supposed to make everything better. As I'm sure you can imagine, it's not how it played out in the end, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Now, what's interesting about this place is that Pennhurst as a whole is actually a collection of over 20 buildings. It's not just like one building. It's so many different ones. There's an upper campus and a lower campus. And I would name all the buildings, but what's the point? I'll get to the most important ones later. Okay. Um... But just know there's a ton, tons of places for you to be. So, so like a whole campus. Yeah, it's pretty much like a college. Yeah. 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 Like it when you see the pictures of it, like from the sky or whatever. But anyway, like I said, November 23rd, 1908, Pinhurst accepted its first patient into the hospital. And within just four years of it opening, it was heavily overcrowded due to the pressure that they've had to take in not only the quote-unquote feeble-minded and the epileptic, but also immigrants, orphans, and criminals. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. They were like, yeah, let's send everybody here. They're just grouping everybody together? Yeah. What Anybody who's not quote-unquote that? normal, let's send them to Pinhurst. Immigrants are part of that? Yeah. Yeah, they are. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> and then you're going to send immigrants, orphans, People with mental disabilities and epilepsy in with the criminals? Like, what? Like, not criminally insane. Like, not like people who have a problem. Just any criminal? Like, both. Like, criminally insane and just regular criminals. (laughs) So. Yeah. Because, like, I could see where they would get, like, okay, these people have, like, mental. Like, need some help mentally. Yeah. For sure. But but if they're just, like, oh, it's just literally anybody is yeah. getting shoved into here. Yeah, because, like, pretty much, you, like, you live here. You're not leaving. So they're like, yeah, it's pretty much jail. Send the criminals there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And the immigrants, it's probably because they just don't speak English. And yeah. they're like, you know what? <laughs> you're just going to get sent here. Yeah. We don't want to deal with can't you. can't talk to us? Yep, you're going here, too. Lock them up. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Yikes. It's so bad. So it went from this place that was supposed to be this, sa- like, safe sanctuary to now, pretty much, it's immediate horrible conditions going on here. So, when you were admitted into Pinhurst, residents were classified into three different categories, okay? So, there was mental, physical, and dental. So, you had to go through this little (laughs) test. So, for the mental 
category, you were marked either imbecile or insane. Oh, my God. You couldn't be normal? Mm -mm. Oh, no, not at Pennhurst, no. No, no, no. For the either th- You're either an imbecile or insane. Yeah. Which one are you? I think I'm both. <laughs> I really, truly. That is so horrible. I just. It's horrible. I can't. Listen, I can't help but, like, joke about it. But no, it's just, like, I know. That's so I know. horrible. You have to laugh because it's actually that bad. Yeah. It really is truly that horrible. <laughs> like, God. The way that they thought that that. And they were like, yeah, we're, these are medical terminologies. Like, no, it's not. You're bullying. <laughs> right. People. Yeah. Anyway, so for the physical category, you were marked either epileptic or healthy. Okay, okay. And for the dental category, you were marked good, poor, or treated teeth. I don't know why they cared so much about teeth. Okay. Truly, I don't know. So, but I find that to be pretty interesting. And also, like I said, it was not only a hospital, but also a school and the jobs for these people. So the jobs that you could have here were mattress maker, shoemaker, and repair, obviously. Um, grading, farming, laundry, sewing, baking, butchering, or working in the store. Okay. So, so they're pretty okay. much running the whole place, even though they're allegedly imbeciles or right. unhealthy or all these other horrible terms that they want to call these people. Yet so, they're running this little uh, town basically that yeah, they've created that's what it seems like so were they selling the mattresses and shoes or were they just for the people who lived there i think it was for the people who lived there but okay. still you know just wow. very very confusing in my opinion so now we're going to talk about the treatment of these patients and like i said this place was supposed to be safe sanctuary did not happen um, Pinhurst chief physician Henry Goddard was quoted. Okay, this is his quote, not my words. Every feeble minded person is a potential criminal. It's a good thing to separate the idiot from the imbecile. However, there has not of yet been the proper treatment to determine which is the brighter and which is the more dangerous individual. Okay. Uh huh. Um, so <laughs> let me break that down for you just in case. You maybe missed it. This guy, a.k.a. one of the head doctors of this hospital, is a piece of garbage trash who's saying that people with mental disabilities should be treated the same as those of murderers and that they could all potentially be criminals. Like, you know, they could all kill people just because they have problems that they can't help. Yeah. (sighs) See, the stigma towards, like, mental health and everything has really come so far because that's where we were. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And to fast forward, uh, this went on to nineteen eighty seven. (laughs) So Of course. Um that's not that long ago. That's only forty years ago, if you round. So in in forty years, I am proud to at least say we've came a long way from this. But I mean, were they still doing the same things in the eighties? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And calling people imbeciles. Yeah, we'll get there, but yeah. Yep. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, um, also, as you can probably guess, the women and the men were treated differently at this place. Um, they kept the women completely separate from the men to ensure that no patients got pregnant at all. Because this, in their eyes, would be complete abomination <sighs> for there to be a child born of this, you know. Wow. Um, no, yeah. that's... Uh... It's so bad. It's so bad. Um, so there were nearly 3,000 patients at, like, the highest time. Pretty much all the time. The whole time it was open. And when I first looked it up, it said most of the patients were children. And I was very confused by this. Because I, like, <laughs> I was like, this is not a children's hospital. What are you talking about? Well, didn't you say there was orphans? Well, there were orphans. There were orphans. But, and there were children. But that is when I found the extremely, extremely messed up fact that regardless of the patient's age, all residents at Penhurst were referred to as children oh. because that's um. how far their brain's capacity were in their mm-hmm. eyes. 
So, That's yeah. That's not even true for probably... Most of them. A, a lot of them, yeah. The average age of the patients at Penhurst was 36 years old. Oh, my God. Yeah, I got chills saying that. That's horrible. So, they were being treated like and called children while also being tortured worse than most adults today. Which we'll get there, so... Um, There were a total of nine doctors and 11 teachers that worked here for 3,000 patients. Nine doctors and 11 teachers. Oh, my God. Total? The Mm -hmm. whole place? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. There were constant fights between patients, and there were so little authority that it always got brushed under the rug. Um, One patient who has survived... Penhurst and escaped or got out when it closed um, claimed that another patient actually injected him with something that ended up causing him an infection that made him lose his leg so in revenge he injected his bully and overdosed him but was never caught oh my god I wish we had video of like of us right now because my face (laughs) oh when you were saying that, oh. oh my god, I'm in shock. Oh yeah. What? Oh yeah, and I really, really need y'all to know that what I'm the stories that I'm telling you are like the, the just like the tip of the iceberg. There were some absolutely horrendous stories that I found on this place. So, yeah, um, you just know the things that's going on here. It's very bad. But it wasn't only patients fighting other patients going on here. The malpractice of the doctors that was going on at this place was anything but, like beyond your worst fears. Um, we don't have too much information on this because, you know, some people didn't survive or they were like treated so bad or treated like shocked, anything waterboarded you know to where their brains if it if they had any brain capacity they didn't when they left this place because they were tortured if you know what i'm saying oh my god that's so scary uh yeah 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 yeah. but in the early 1960s so yes 60 years um after it opened let mind you okay 60 years this has been going on but in the early 60s A brand new TV reporter, Bill Baldini, ran a five-episode expose of Pennhurst State School and Hospital on Philadelphia's TV 10, which today is NBC. Um, And it's a docuseries called Suffer the Little Children. (gasps) Oh, my God. Where this, he went in to Pennhurst and got video, recorded what was going on, and (laughs) then released it to the world. And it painted this huge picture of neglect and abuse. So much so that most people couldn't actually stomach to watch the entire thing. Um, Did you watch it? I've seen clips. I didn't watch the whole thing. Oh my gosh. I feel like I need to find it. Yeah. Well, it's all, it's in black and white. Kind of blurry. I mean, it's kind of old. So yeah. it's kind of hard to see also a little bit. But it's really bad. Okay. It's really bad. I don't I, I don't even want to watch it all. Just because it's, it's really that bad. Um, so for some examples of what was seen, there were full grown hands and feet bound by straps in, of people in adult sized cribs, quite literally treating these people like babies, even though they were nearly 40 years old, most of them. Like babies, but also handcuffing them. Yeah. And prisoners. Yeah. Absolutely horrible. Um, some images show patients just rocking and twitching because they literally couldn't help it um most some of them were laying on the ground but all of them were still tied to something they weren't just like walking around free there were patients who were like would start down a really long hallway and just run their head into a concrete wall (gasps) over and over (sighs) um yeah and so okay how did this guy get in there (gasps) I to think film this. I do. That's what I don't know. <laughs> I is think, it because they didn't have any staff to I, no, they to, thought, to kick him out? No, he they no. They let him do this. They let him. I'll huh. get to it in a minute, but they, he interviews doctors. 
Because they didn't think that what they were doing was wrong. What? Yeah. Yeah. Um. The, yeah. It's just crazy how they just did not have any respect for these people at all. Mm-mm. Z- like zero. Like more than zero. Negative. And they're doctors. Yeah. It's like... Yeah. There was a doctor actually in the video whose name literally is Dr. Fear. <laughs> um, and he worked oh there. Oh my God. And he was shown in the docuseries literally admitting to threatening and punishing patients. So Mm. he didn't care. Um, One of his punishments, he said, was injecting patients with the most painful injection and the biggest needle. um, But that wouldn't kill them. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why? Why? Oh, just simply because. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. So what's interesting is that... This docuseries came out just at the time, right in the heart of the human rights movement that took over the country Mm -hmm. at the time, when people were fighting for health care rights for the mentally and physically handicapped. And unfortunately, this institution was used as the most striking and hard-hitting example of the the maltreatment at the time, so much so that Pennhurst is known as the great shame of Pennsylvania. (laughs) today i mean yeah (laughs) as it should be yeah (laughs) i mean like jesus it's horrible um this expose quickly you know drew attention and even though it came out in the early 1960s it (laughs) stayed open until 1987 when it was forced to close its doors for good um that's so crazy which is like 20 more years Right, and that, like, my parents were alive and, like, in the area. Yeah, I need you to ask them about around. it. You should ask them about it. See if they yeah, know. Yeah, like, if they heard anything about it. Yeah, so I think it did start getting better after the 1960s. Like, obviously, like, now that there was attention and eyes on it, like, they had to stop being so mean and stuff. So, like, it might have been better when your parents were actually alive and around in the time. But I don't know. You'll have yeah. to ask them. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, were <clears throat> people talking about it, like, um, making comments like the one that you heard in Stranger Things, you know? Yeah, exactly. Probably. Like, Pro- saying I'm sure. stuff like that. I'm sure they were. I'm absolutely sure they were. Because, mm-hmm. like, even my family make jokes, like, about sending them to Weston, which is a used to be a asylum close to where my family lives. So, mm-hmm. I'm sure they did. Um. So, like I said, yeah, it closed in 1987, but this actually caused a lot more issues because suddenly we have 3,000 people that need to go somewhere, whether it be in other facilities or maybe they were just let go into the world <laughs> to, That's to, so to live. Because it's like, okay, on one hand, it's like, yes, they're free now, but also on the other hand, it's like they've never probably they've never been they've free. most likely never been like by themselves no. and they can't yeah like support themselves like, yeah and yeah. like most people in there pr- probably have at least one reason that they actually needed to be in there for you know yeah so like or needed needed somebody to watch yeah them and, like, some kind them. of help yeah, yeah so that created a whole another problem and then today as i mentioned it's one of the most famous attractions in the world and by that I do mean it's purposefully, you know, like a haunted attraction. Yeah. But it's like one of those where they kind of push you to your limits, if you know, like, like one of those really serious haunted houses where you have to like sign a bunch of waivers and stuff. Like, yeah, I don't know if it's like you're getting treated like these people were treated, but if that's the, I think it is like that. And there's a lot of controversy due to that because of everything bad that's already happened here. And you I know, mean, I, I agree. I definitely that. have heard of people going to Penhurst when, like, even when I was, like, in high school, like, people would go, like, to, around Halloween. Mm-hmm. But I was always too scared to do it. And I didn't really know much about it. Because, like, I'm not, you know, I've never really been into, like, the haunted houses and stuff. Yeah. yeah but yeah, I can yeah. see, honestly, if you went to my high school, you probably would have went. <laughs> I probably would have, yeah. But I, um, because you're into that kind of stuff. But I... Yeah, I didn't really ever pay attention to it, but yeah, but I'm not into the ones that are like gonna cause me pain and stuff. Like I, I don't want yeah. to be touched in anything. Yeah, you know, I'm yeah. not down for those. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, 
Do you have to be a certain age to do it? You know, I don't, I don't actually know. I didn't look it up. Because I feel like I do remember people going to it, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. I also, know, I don't know when it turned into the attraction because it was definitely in the time. I think, I want to say 2017. So that would have been after high school. And oh, up until... Well, maybe not then. And before... Okay, so before it was the haunted house, it was just abandoned. So people okay. could have been going to it. True. Just to be like, ooh, let's go to this abandoned asylum, yeah. you know? Yeah. No, well, there was definitely... Maybe I'm thinking of another haunted place, because there's a few different ones in yeah, the Philly that's, area. That's you know? true. But, Very true. Um, huh. Okay. Well, then, yeah, backtrack on that. I, I was yeah. wrong. But um, hmm, that that would be cool to see like you know those abandoned videos that like show yeah yeah yeah, like on youtube they just like go through an abandoned place oh i love that yeah i I would would love to to do that that, but like i don't want to risk getting arrested yeah like not go my by myself like i would want to see a video (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) shout out to those youtubers who do that for us so we don't have to (laughs) yeah um okay but so now in as of like 2017 it's like a haunted attraction yeah I think 2017. I didn't write that down. That could be a wrong year, but okay. I think I remember seeing that. But anyway, so I know that was a lot of history, but it had to be said because you had to know what all went on there. But as I'm sure you can imagine, thousands of people have died here and there are tons of reports of this place being actually haunted from real ghosts. So there have been audio recordings, and when I say have been audio recordings, I mean these are constantly coming in, because there are paranormal tours, you can rent it out and like investigate it and stuff. Um, The most typical things that are caught as voice phenomena are go away, I'm scared, and why are you here? Which kind of breaks my heart, honestly, because you know those are patients, like you know, like they're not being mean. They're just like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Which is just so Mm -hmm. sad. Um, Lots of apparitions have been seen all throughout the property. But let's get into some of the most haunted buildings. Okay. So one of them called the Quaker building has, it has the most shadow figure activity going on here. So that's horrifying. They, all of the shadows that are seen in the Quaker building are said to manifest and dissipate like extremely quickly. The, and there are two most common figures that are seen. There's one of a small little girl with long black hair, which is sad, but I also hate that because that's scary, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then the other is a very hunched over person with extremely long arms which also is really scary because to me that probably means they have like a limb disease, like maybe Marfan syndrome or something like that. And which is so sad to think about, but like also if I saw a shadow figure that looked like that, I would be so scared, (laughs) you know, like it's so hard to think like these are actual just like people probably you yeah. had diseases, but also that's so scary. Like it is. It's so scary. Um, yeah. So it's just sad to think that these poor like souls are just stuck here, like to be to be just traumatized forever. And now they have to see people come in and purposefully pay to get scared here when they had to suffer and be locked up here. You know, it's kinda of really messed up, honestly. I know, it is. It is kinda of messed up. Yeah. But Also in the Quaker building, doors slam on their own. Um, There's rocking chairs in the building, and they're all said to, like, move on their own daily. Just rocking back and forth. Very creepy. People get pushed down the stairs in this building. Um, Pushed down the stairs? mm -hmm. (laughs) Yep, they sure do. People get deep gashes and cuts from absolutely nothing. Just standing there, and all of a sudden you're bleeding. That's horrifying. And objects have been seen thrown across rooms in here. So this is a paranormal hotspot for sure. Okay? For sure. I would not be messing around in the Quaker building if I were you. (laughs) Not at all. 
Um, so moving on to the Philadelphia building. Um, this one has constant reports of loud sounds and voices. Um, okay. <laughs> There's a big thing that I forgot to mention earlier. Not only is all this going on <laughs> that I've mentioned thus far, but there's also an entire tunnel system underneath Penhurst that they would use to transport bodies and such things. See, that always is the case, isn't it? It sure oh is. <laughs> it sure is. I can't believe. Uh-huh. And so while it's connected to all of them, for some reason the connection of like the Philadelphia building and the tunnels underneath the Philadelphia building seemed to be a hot spot. So it must have been a place where that's the bad bad place, you know, Philadelphia building. Um, there's a bunch of strange sounds there and a lot of the workers who work there today refuse to go even into the Philadelphia building or in the tunnels near the Philadelphia building and they don't give a reason why. So, um, that's horrifying, (laughs) horrifying. Mm -hmm. Um, moving along the Tinicum building. This is horrible, Savannah. I don't even know. You say the Tinicum building? Yeah. I don't know what that T- means. Wait, Tinicum? Yeah. That's a, that's a town near where I grew up. So I think that's the <laughs> I think that's the whole I think every building is named on a town in Pennsylvania. Wow. Um, cuz you know the Philadelphia Tinicum. Yeah. I didn't know what Tinicum was, so I just, you know, was Tinicum, like, that was part of my like school district. <laughs> that's crazy. Like, it was really close to yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Well, this can be your assigned building. You want to know what oh, happens God. there? Oh, God. No, what happens there? (laughs) Um, Most people report feelings of getting their legs touched or rubbed by nothing. Oh, wow. Love that. Uh I feel like that's very specific, and I really don't like it. I've never heard of something like that. Like, they feel like hands are touching and rubbing their legs specifically. No, no, no. Horrifying. Horrifying. Hate it. There is also the Mayflower building. Um, And in the Mayflower building, apparently there's a boy ghost named Howie, and he is said to haunt the upstairs. And apparently he loves this toy plane that they keep up there for him. And whoever touches the plane, allegedly he will hurt you if you do. Oh, ew, Um, I hate that. I don't know what that means. Like, if it means, like, we're getting scratched, we're getting pushed, I don't know. But I just wouldn't mess with this plane if I were you, you know? Mm Mm-mm. And why would you? You know, don't torture them. They're already tortured enough. Um, there's also in the Mayflower building a shadow man allegedly named Fisher who resides up, up on the second um, story of the building. And he is most often captured in photos by the guest. There have been tons of pictures of what looks to be like the shape of a man, but kind of see through. And also he's just kind of like a shadow. Hmm. And they assume his name is Fisher because, like, that's just a name that's carved into one of the bedrooms upstairs. So they don't really know if that's Uh-oh. who it is. But they're, they're like, just like you know, that's what we're going with. Yeah, they're like, it was probably you, right? Yeah, like, probably. That's you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, okay. This is crazy. This is crazy. The last ghost in the Mayflower building, okay, is allegedly a ghost nurse. Who used to work there. Okay. She has been seen there in like old nurse fashion. But the most common occurrence with her is probably the worst of all, I would say. Um, It feels like you're getting stabbed with an injection. Like a Uh shot. Mm -mm. Uh Uh-uh. A ghost shot could not be me. Oh, no. I don't even want to get a regular shot. I want a different kind of ghost shot. Yeah, same. Same. (laughs) I would take a ghost shot. With the ghost. I don't yeah. want to be given a ghost like shot. Like, if we're taking shots, yes. <laughs> exactly. But if, if you're giving me a shot, that's different. No. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, no, not for me. And so most of the other buildings on the property, they all have similar reports, all of ghost sightings and things and people who they think it might be. But we would quite literally be here all night if I sat here and went through every single one of them. So I think it's safe for me to say... This place is certified spook magooked, haunted, no doubt about it. The oh, history, it I mean, come on, obviously. it's If it's one place that's going to be haunted, it's going to be Penhurst. No, totally. Um, 
Uh, I do have something oh, I feel like I need to I need to in- interject. Okay. So I when you were when we were talking about when the attraction part of it opened, uh-huh. I was like curious. So I was like, okay, let me look it up to see when okay. it actually opened. That? And it opened in October of 2010. 2010. Interesting. Okay, so, so maybe your friends. So I go. could yeah, I could be correct about that. Like some people might have went from my school. But also I wanted to mention that because it says here that Penhurst owners worked with Randy Bates of the Bates Motel. What? To to turn Penhurst into a Halloween attraction. Wait, okay. <laughs> do we mean the Bates Motel, the TV show? Do we mean the... What do we mean? I don't know. It just says Randy Bates of the Bates Motel Halloween attraction. Um, okay. That's crazy. <laughs> also, you need to... Okay, I need you to ask your parents and your friends if they've been to Penhurst. That's your homework yeah. for the week, Savannah. Because yeah. I need to know. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> very, very much so. I wonder if something must have opened in 2017, though, because I very much so remember something opening in 2017. Yeah. We'll have maybe. to look into that. I will see Yeah, what's okay. going on with that. But yeah, no, I saw the Bates Motel. I was like, oh, my God, the That's same crazy, people. So though, basically cause... the same people made both or like similar ideas for both. That's horrifying. The Bates Motel, if, it, if they're talking about the TV show, that's horrifying. They're they're talking about like the attraction. The attraction. I didn't know there was an attraction of the Bates Motel. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, actually, let me see. Is that near where I grew up too? Is that why I know it? (laughs) (laughs) The only thing I know of the Bates Motel is well, the real story and the TV show, which was a big obsession of mine. See, yeah. Okay. Now that I'm looking into it more. Yeah, I only know about this because it was really close to where I grew up, too. Yeah. <laughs> You're telling me you had both of these things and you didn't go to any of them? So, no. <laughs> See, this might have been... Honestly, Bates Motel was closer, I believe. So people, like, from my school and stuff might have gone to Bates Motel Insta, I versus see what you're saying. that. But, I mean, maybe, maybe both were on the list. I don't know. But I... I kind of wish I was more into those Halloween type things because then I could like put my perspective in there. But I just, I have not been. So <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. So we forgive you. We forgive you, I guess. Even though it would have been a cool story to add, Savannah. <laughs> go, go back in <laughs> time and you just go to Penhurst. <laughs> yeah, go to Penhurst. <laughs> That's go to the Bates one thing Hotel. you would do. Yeah, and yeah. Okay, so almost done here, finishing up. Um, Don't get me wrong, okay? Penhurst. It is still up and running as a business, as we already know. We've said this many times. But the whole, like, the building parts of it, like, the upkeep, it's very, it looks like it's still abandoned. Like, it's very much so still in disrepair. Which is really weird to me. (laughs) Like, they have to be making money, and they're just not keeping up with, like, the buildings. Because it looks abandoned. Horribly. Still. So, that's crazy and they have done some like small repairs and stuff but nothing major and apparently with the small repairs and the haunted house attraction the um real ghosts are only have been more angry since then and so people say that they don't actually know what in the haunted attraction is real versus just part of the attraction so Mm -hmm. that's also Mm -hmm. pretty scary um But, yeah, the reason, actually, that that this place closed down in 1987 was because of that whole, like, human rights movement. Um, It actually got sent to the Supreme Court, like, specifically Pennhurst um, versus whoever, the Supreme Court, I guess. And so you know Mm -hmm. it's really bad if the Supreme Court itself has to shut you down as a business. Yeah, honestly, yeah. So, yeah, that is... And they actually did... Because you know their reputation nowadays. Well, I mean, it took it took them twenty years to do it from the expose till the trial and stuff, but they did do it in twenty years. You know, gotta give them, I guess, a little sliver of credit there, even though they could have did it a little faster. But you know, they don't get it in a hurry over at the Supreme Court for really anything. So yeah, that is the legend of Pinhurst State School and Hospital slash Asylum. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was awesome. Awesome, awesome but also... Awesomely horrible. Horrible. Yeah, yeah horrible. Um, 
made mm. me real sad. But, you know, I just hope that yeah. the ghosts there, I hope they're just kind of like the ones that we talk about where who are just like stuck and not like their souls aren't actually stuck there, you know. I hope they're not tortured yeah. forever. I know. There. And maybe we should stop doing haunted attractions in places like this. Like, we can make them anywhere. They don't have to be in somewhere scary. You know? Right, yeah. Like, you like, can make a haunted place that's, like, We can even like make that. a Penhurst Asylum haunted house just in a regular warehouse. We don't have to do it there. Yeah. It's very disrespectful, yeah. I feel like. Mm-hmm. And, like, I know we've covered stories like this before, and they've had haunted attractions in them, too. But, I don't know. This one is just, like, for some reason it hits harder. I'm like, this is kind of actually bad, like... Mm-hmm. We shouldn't really be doing this. Yeah. I really think. So, yeah. But definitely go check out our Instagram. Because you're going to want to see the pictures from this week. Got to see the hospital. Got to see Champy. And yes, I'm calling oh, him yes, Champy. Oh, yes, Champy. <laughs> no, I know. I feel like this has been, like, we've been talking about Penhurst for so long. I, I forgot know. about Champy. Forgot about Champy. Like, no, oh. never. <laughs> hashtag never forget Champy. We love Champ. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry it was a long one. But also, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> um, go rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, please. Yes, please. But other than that, I don't really have anything else for you guys. What about you, Savannah? Um, I think that's it. Okay, well then I guess we will see you guys next week. Cue the music. Cue the music.